Hello, I'm Dr. Mikey Meborn, and this is Leadership Development. Today, we're looking at the topic, Appeal to Common Ideals. Everyone has a set of ideals that they live by, values, convictions, beliefs, things like that. And so whether we're talking about our family, family life, or our workplace, things that are going on in the workplace, or our church that we serve at, we're going to carry those ideals with us. We're going to carry those values with us. And so what does that mean? How do we interact with other people in a way that those values are upheld? How do we do that? What does the Bible have to say about that? We're going to look at that today. It's good to be with you. Let's begin our study. Hello and welcome to Leadership Development. Today we're looking at the topic, Appeal to Common Ideals. It's a great topic for us to look at today. It's good to be with you. Let's begin our study. I want to start by asking some important questions. What values are important to your family? How do you express your values in the workplace? Can you work with people who don't share your beliefs or values? What are common pitfalls for differing ideals and values? What does the Bible say about unity in the family and workplace? All these questions are important, but there's a theme for all of these. A lot of it has to do with your values, your beliefs, your ideals. And what we want to do in this lesson today is to look at the different ideals and why does that matter to us today? Why does it matter in our family? Why does it matter in the workplace? And how do we thrive in these areas in each of our lives? I want to answer some of the questions by looking at some different passages today that will be helpful in understanding what has God called us to do. We see the law of God. In Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. This powerful conversation between a lawyer and Jesus is very important for everyone reading their Bibles. Because it's helpful to see what the law is really about. It's about loving God having a right relationship with God, and loving people. And so when we're thinking about common ideals, we're thinking about common values, and how do you appeal to them? Well, it's going to involve a lot of these types of things. But kindness is going to be a big part of that. Love, respect, trust, all those things are going to matter. Having the right relationship with people is going to depend on what we have as our values and our ideals. That really, really matters to us. So we need to consider those types of things um, as we look at having or appealing to common ideals. In Romans 13, verses 1 and 2, it reads, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. This passage is so important for the Christian because there are authorities that are put in place. There are governing authorities that are put in place. We can think of kings and presidents and, and, and people who are over countries, regions, major areas that God has put in those places. He's instituted um, those positions and he uh, has brought these people up in power. Now, do we fully understand that? Absolutely not. Do we know how God's working in all that? No, of course not. But we can clearly see throughout the Old Testament, when we look at the book of Daniel, we can see that God was bringing things about through the Babylonians. We see that with the Chaldeans or the Medo-Persians. We also see it with the Greeks and then into the Romans, that God was bringing these institutions about and putting them into place and bringing the leaders into place as well. It's important to see that. But why does that matter? It matters how we work in the workplace. It matters what our ideals are. And it matters when we're trying to appeal to other people's ideals. Think about Daniel when he worked for Nebuchadnezzar. That's a very unusual relationship, working relationship. But he worked with him, worked for him, and was there for years. And he was put in charge of a vast amount of the kingdom. Also, Joseph worked for Pharaoh and was really... Number two to Pharaoh in all the land of Egypt. Now, how can this work? Well, it works because the ideals that Joseph has were appealing even to 
the lost world. The, uh, the ideals and the values and the beliefs that Daniel had were appealing to others that, were not, that did not even carry those. That's important. We also see that Jesus obeyed the laws. Do you remember the wonderful passage that shows Jesus is paying the tax and he's telling um, the, the leaders, he's telling the, the lawyers of that day, he's telling the teachers of the law, and, and he's telling those who are the Pharisees and the ones who are very religious. He's saying, listen, I pay my taxes. I do what I'm supposed to be doing. Jesus was obeying the law. He was fulfilling the law of God. And he was making sure that he did everything right. You don't even see him coming against Pilate toward the end of his human life on earth whatsoever. He doesn't come against the Romans. He yet willingly goes to his death where he will give his life as a ransom for the many, as we read about in, in Romans chapter 5. Now that's important for us because we need to see here that these people were sharing their values even in a system that may not have had held all their convictions and beliefs, but it was appealing to them, and there was a lot of great things that came out of that, of course. Now, what about working with the church? In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it reads, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. How, how should we work within the church? It should be for building up. Everybody's bringing all these things in, but really what we need to be doing is building one another up, and that should be our focus, and we should be people who are going at this the right way. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not a God of confusion, but a God of peace. He's He's coming against them. He's rebuking them because they're bringing all these things to the table. They're bringing all these ideas. They're bringing all these different focuses and saying, we need to focus on this. We need to focus on that. And he's saying, listen, God is not a God of confusion. He wants you to take the word of God, read it, believe it, and live it, and let that be a great partnership between the people of God and in Christ, the head of the church. It's vital that they have that. All right, so this is a big part of what the Christian ideals are about. Also, like-minded, 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Paul is coming to an end with this letter, and he's telling them, strive for peace, strive for unity. Be like-minded. Set your hearts and minds to Christ. Do all things so that you will have fellowship with one another, and that fellowship be with the Holy Spirit. Be like-minded people. This is how you're to live your life. So when we're thinking about how a Christian is to um, function in the church, it should be through peace. Be like-minded. Focusing on Christ, the idea of a triangle. We're all looking up. What that does is it brings everybody together, like the spokes on a bicycle as well. You look to the center, it brings you all closer. That's the same idea that we're looking at. So if we're talking about leadership development in the Christian world, or we're talking about it with a nonprofit organization, a movement of Christian people, or a church, we're saying this, we need to be like-minded, striving for peace, looking to have right fellowship and be right with God and all those things. Philippians 2, 2 reads, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Paul is teaching them so clearly, you should have a laser focus to Christ Jesus. Be of one mind. As you put your focus on Christ, and everybody does that, and you know the Word of God, it will bring you closer to one another. That's exactly what's going to happen. So be like-minded in your relationships. Be careful who you connect yourself with. Now, the Bible talks about this, the idea of being unequally yoked. And <laughs> I love to see here um, two completely different animals with two completely different 
uh, abilities and power within each one of them, okay? We need to make sure that we are equally yoked with others. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? 2 Corinthians Paul is telling the church of Corinth, don't connect yourself in intimate relationships or strong working relationships. Align yourself with unbelievers. Be careful about that. Make sure that you work with people who have your values because if they don't, there is a very strong chance that they're going to take advantage of you. And not just that, you're not going to be able to have a great relationship moving forward with them necessarily. So you want those values to be there. It's important. Now he's talking to a church and he's telling this church, be careful how you function. Make sure that you align yourself with other people. Now what they were doing at the time is they were so connected with the Roman world. They were so connected with people that were unbelievers. They were connected with them uh, for daily living. They were connected with them for um, for work. They were connected with them for a lot of different reasons, and marriage was one of those things. And so people were wrongly connected to others that were unbelievers. And because of that, it created some issues that needed to be dealt with. And Paul is working through those issues with the church of Corinth. Now, we also see that there's this teaching about one in Christ. Galatians 3, 27, 28. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There is no male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Who are they? They're immersed into Christ, clothed into Christ, one in Christ Jesus. The idea that we have been completely immersed into him means that we change who we are. Now that we're, now we're seen in Christ. Also, we're clothed in Christ. We put on Christ. Colossians speaks very strongly about that. And then we have the same common bond, which is we're one in Christ because we've been recreated of the same things, the same nature. That's important when we think about what, what we have in Christ. Now, and the idea of equally yoked, what is the meaning there? Having similar beliefs, values, and practices. Align yourself with people of Christ-centered faith. Leadership with people from different faiths can cause divisions. People have different values. You think of a Christian and a Muslim trying to work together. There might be some things that they can do well together, but their differences are very, very deep. They might have different convictions leading them to lead with different styles. And if that's the case, um, it can cause major division in the workplace. Spiritual unity with Christ creates relational unity in the ministry. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and idol worship is prohibited. If we align ourselves with people, and let's say for instance that you have some neighbors that are very kind, they're wonderful people, and you're in their lives a lot. The kids want to play together, but these people that your neighbor that are your neighbors have different beliefs, and they have a whole, totally different focus, and they don't believe in Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, but they completely reject that belief system. Now, what do you do in a situation like that? What do you do, and we're talking about neighbors because you're going to see this in every area of life, whether it's the workplace or you're going to see it um, on the ball field, whatever it might be. What do you do? I think you have to be very careful to realize and understand that there has to be boundaries in the Christian life to say, yes, I can talk to you. Yes, I can be an acquaintance to you. And I can share the gospel with you. And our relationship needs to be on that level. But when we start spending large amounts of time with people that are not of the same faith, not the same convictions, what will happen is, is that we tend to water down or, or, uh, or pull away from our beliefs so that we can do more things with those people. And we have to be careful about that because if that's happening in our lives, let's say on our street, well, it's going to be happening in the workplace. And before you know it, it's a lot easier to be brought down than to bring others up. And we need to consider those types of things. Now, also, I want to look at restoring unity. In Galatians 6, 1 through 5, it reads, Brothers, if anyone is caught in 
any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Now, what's the summary here of Galatians 6? Look out for one another. Help those who are hurting. Treat people with gentleness and respect. Watch your steps, lest you fall as well. And then bear one another's burdens. This summary of Galatians 6 verses 1 through 5 is so important for us because we need to make sure that as we try to lift people up, we are not being brought down. And he's saying this is vital when we think about unity because people are being pulled away from the faith all the time. And what we need to do is bring them back, strengthen them, lift them back into where they need to be. Because if we don't, we might lose that unity completely with them or we might be in broken fellowship. Also, strive for unity. 1 Corinthians 1.10 I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. I love this cartoon here. Um, it's the idea of two different people looking different directions. One has a plug, the other one has a plug, and they easily fit together, but they're not connecting them because they're not facing each other. They're not working together. Um, they're, they're not one. And if they would just turn around and they would have the same mind, the same focus, they could easily bring power to what they need to accomplish. And so we sometimes miss that, but we need to strive for unity more. We also see it in Hebrews 12, 14. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Did you know that God has called us to live at peace with all people and to be holy? For without holiness, people will not see God on the earth. God is calling people to be holy so that the people who are watching, the ones who are living godly lives, those people will be impacted by that. And that's what he's saying. Romans 12, 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. He's saying, live in harmony, strive for peace, try to help other people, do everything that you can so that you can bring attention to God's greatness. Well, this has been Appeal to Common Ideals. Good to be with you. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right, that concludes our study for today. Do you remember Hebrews 12, 14? Let me give you another translation of that. Make every effort to live at peace with all men and to be holy. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. I know that you want people to see the Lord. I want people to see the Lord. But the way that that can be done is if you live at peace with all men and you live out your convictions, you live out your values, you live out your beliefs. And by you sharing those values with other people, it's going to spotlight the things of God and it's going to appeal to the right type of ideals that are really out there. And it's going to help bolster or strengthen um, those nonprofits, those organizations that are seeking to do things the right way, which is God's way. So good to be with you today. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.